do. But now I'm finished bobbing, I don't know what to do. I'm growing old and feeble, and I can bob no more. So I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Back to you. You know, there were some interesting challenges as we started to uh, try and prepare for this course. Uh, scouting is a wonderful movement, but it yet hasn't yet caught up with all of the culture of the deaf. For instance, we had a real difficult time finding materials that were closed captioned. And so we had to take all of the materials that we had uh, to use here at Woodbadge, and we had to figure out how to get them closed captioned. So I've learned a heck of a lot about uh, how that process works, but it's been wonderful. Um, it's fun, so fun, to watch the deaf, the faces of the deaf people, the participants here, as they see the preparations that we've made, and they see those closed captions. And for the first time, they're actually getting an opportunity to get scouting training and in a way that they can understand and absorb it. It's just been wonderful. It's so fun to watch those smiles. Last year, May 2011, I was on staff at a Wood Badge course, and two of the participants, a husband and wife, both were ASL interpreters, or are ASL interpreters. And for one of their goals in their ticket, wanted to create the ability or modify the Wood Badge course to be deaf accessible. The goal was to rewrite the syllabus to be deaf accessible or deaf friendly. It was turned into the Great Salt Lake Council, then forwarded on to National BSA, who also reviewed it and looked at it and were very impressed and sent a charter uh, to Great Salt Lake Council to uh, put together a pilot ASL English bilingual program. Um, I had no idea that when I started my ticket and, and tried to make sure that the need for deaf accessible trainings, um, that need was heard, I had no idea that we would be one year later holding an accessible deaf wood badge course with 16 participants and two deaf staff. I, I'm blown away with the amount of support and effort that so many people have put in um, to make this happen. It, it truly shows that Wood Badge can work and as you put a ticket together, um, you can be successful in, in changing something that needs to be moved forward in scouting. I was so pleased to find out that National was going to send someone um, to come to our course to see what was happening. It shows the dedication to the diversity of scouting, to everyone that they want to um, include in scouting. It's an inclusiveness um, program that obviously they're trying to run and I'm hoping that they can take it back and we can um, bring this to other areas of the country and the world. Well I think what you're doing here right now is pretty much the start. Uh, I have not heard of any other ASL um, courses or trainings done at all in my tenure as Scouting with Special Needs and Disabilities Advisor but I will tell you I'm very impressed because from what I've seen from the very first day of being here, even until now, it has already given me some ideas of what we can do at a national level. You know, from making sure that there are elements of training that are closed captioning, things that where we can actually reach out to the deaf community and show that they are properly trained. So if anything, it's actually shown me much more and opened my eyes and opened my ears to really see we can take this to a whole other level. And hopefully this, what you're doing here, will become the model for the entire country. The Great Salt Lake Council's vision of establishing a full-blown ASL training program is based upon the fact that every boy deserves a trained leader. And every boy, no matter whether uh, he communicates with ASL or in Spanish or whether he's from Bosnia or wherever it is, uh, deserves to have a leader who can speak to him in his language. These young men have wonderful skills, wonderful opportunities, wonderful abilities, and their capabilities, their future is every bit as bright as any other young man. And for that reason, it's important that they be trained uh, in their language so that it gets right to their heart, so that they can understand the magic of scouting. Because scouting's vision is to help young people, no matter what the language, no matter what the background, no matter what the skills and abilities, to be able to make ethical and moral choices over the period of their lifetime by applying the principles of the scout oath and law. This will take this to a new level.
there's never been a time in the history of this country or maybe in this world when our youth need heroes and role models more than they do today. And I walk in there and I see a full staff and all participants who I can say to my grandsons, follow that leader. So this course, the uh, uh, focus has been on the ASL, American Sign Language, and those who have come, or some of them, are uh, deaf and they are giving the special tools and the resources to learn just as a regular uh, hearing person to understand the, the course and this is critical because if we think of what scouting is, it's for all youth and boys and they um, come in various facets of life. Many of them come with special needs today and so if we try to open the doors uh, to this organization, to everyone, we need to address these kinds of uh, needs. The thing about Wood Badge that makes such difference is not only do you come here and you learn things with your brain, but it, it becomes a very deep, not just a, an emotional experience, it becomes a spiritual experience. If you think back to Baden-Powell and Brown Sea Island, he wanted uh, boys from all walks of life. And so that, uh, of course, corresponds with what we're doing with Wood Badge and, and uh, ASL. Uh, we started a few years ago with uh, bilingual Spanish courses, Spanish-English in this council. In fact, uh, with the three councils in the state of Utah. And so now we're expanding that vision to, to uh, uh, ASL and there's other opportunities for us as we move forward uh, as a council. I actually was quite surprised that there were so many uh, deaf that were interested in a wood badge course. I thought we might get uh, two or three but to have two full wood badge patrols is outstanding. They're scouters and they're, uh, they're getting along really well and they're interacting like there was no barrier at all. The, uh, this ASL friendly wood badge course includes three councils. The Great Salt Lake Council, which is where the, uh, the visioning took place for this course. Uh, and they were kind enough to invite the Trapper Trails Council and the Utah National Parks Council to participate. All of which have, have uh, eagerly uh, joined resources and, and uh, there are staff members that's from all three councils in this, in this uh, ASL friendly course. Um, there again, it is important that the collaboration of uh, these different groups of people uh, come together and everybody bring forth their best efforts to make sure that, that this can be successful. We've had to really take a look at the, the syllabus and uh, try to find ways to make it applicable both to the deaf participants and also not to lose out on the hearing participants. So we've kind of a balancing act, but it's uh, been very interesting to, to try to find ways that we can uh, make things applicable for the deaf people as well. There's a uh, lesson that uh, really opened my eyes, the communication trap. We had to redesign this. Usually we had participants blindfolded, but if it's persons, a deaf person is blindfolded, they cannot hear, basically. So we redesigned this and had people back through the course with their eyes open. This works for both the hearing culture and the deaf culture. And the deaf culture, they blew us away. I mean, they went through the course, they flew through the course, and we were just astounded, you know. So they may have disadvantages in one area, but they got other, they have really some great advantages in some other areas. Up until now, there's really been no opportunities in scouting for training, you know, but to make an environment where they could be fully involved and immersed in a training, I've just been so looking forward to this, and it will be so beneficial for the leaders in future and now.
I've learned that it is possible to work together and to succeed in this endeavor. We can remove the barriers. Yes, it's true that we can't hear, but really there's no barriers that we can't under overcome. Anything's possible if we're willing to put our hearts and our minds and our souls into this work. I was so excited for this course because this is a wonderful opportunity um, to have a deaf accessible wood badge experience. Because when um, my experience in wood badge, I had a lot of frustrations that came up because I was the only, well there were really actually two of us that were um, deaf in my course. The interpreting wasn't really up to standard. But this course, we found that it was gonna be deaf accessible and I was thrilled. I wanted to make sure that this, we have something accessible like this for everyone, not just for me or for an, another individual, but for all deaf. We can also have other trainings. We'd be able to have um, round tables and we can have interpreters there um, so that the deaf um, leaders can come and have access to those types of trainings. For the internet trainings, I tend to get frustrated a little bit because, you know, they have the screen pop up, but there's no captioning. So I get nothing out of it. For an example, youth protection training. I pull it up and there's a video and there's a boy and a leader and they're walking on the screen. But, and then there's a red X that comes up and I realize I'm not understanding because they're explaining in depth the questions, but I can hear nothing. And so I get the answers wrong. So when the answers pop up, I just take a wild guess. And it's wrong, of course, because I don't know what the right answer is. I've not been able to access the information they tried to teach through the audio. So if we had captioning, or if we had a script that we could read first, and then we could answer the questions afterward. So it, um, any, any training online i found it doesn't have captioning, and um, the deaf have been very frustrated by that thus far. In scouting, sometimes we don't know how to um, be a part of things. But here at this Wood Badge course, the hearing have enveloped us into everything that was going on. The hearing are trying to learn sign language. For instance, the senior patrol leader in this course has learned sign for the Gilwell song. And that has been so impressive to the deaf patrols. He is signing with the deaf. He is making that a part of this course, that he cares about them and wants to incorporate them as full members in this course. Scouts teach us that we don't want any outcasts. We don't want to leave anyone behind. We want to incorporate and be inclusive with all boys, no matter what or who they are. So it means all deaf boys, we can bring them in as well. We can train their leaders. I want to thank the National Boy Scouts of America for allowing this Wood Badge course to be adjusted, for the syllabus to be adjusted and to come to pass. The deaf want to thank you from the depths of our hearts for making this possible for us. Also, our regional council for the willingness to allow our course director to adjust and modify things to match our needs. We feel so included. We are going to become better leaders thanks to you. And we really appreciate all of your support. When I was growing up, Obviously, I'm deaf, and I was surrounded by hearing boys. There were 40 boys in my troop. All were hearing. I experienced a lot of taunting and teasing and mocking from those hearing boys. They didn't understand my needs. They didn't understand me. So I felt separated from them. I was the outcast. So I didn't feel like this thing was worth it. What is this scouting thing? This is ridiculous, there's nothing for me here, except for one scout leader. This man had a heart of gold and he loved the scout program. He understood the principles behind the scout program. He understood the worth of one scout and that he was worth saving. So he took me aside and he showed me that I was important and he cared for me and he wanted me to improve. He showed this to me on an individual basis. He wanted me to be included in the scouting program so I could become successful. If not for him and his amazing example, I would not be here today as a successful scout leader. I would not be a successful person in my work environment. I think I'd be involved in drugs or smoking. I don't even know. I don't know where I would be. 
but the scouting program saved me through one scout leader. So as I've gone through my life, I've determined that I want to learn more about scouting. And I realized it was fun. It was amazing, and I wanted to become an Eagle Scout. So I rolled up my sleeves, and I had frustrations, yes. Of course there were communication barriers, but I didn't let it stop me. I continued on, and this one scout leader continued to aid me in all of my progress. And I did become an Eagle Scout when I was 14 or 15, somewhere in there. And it helped me to realize that I'm able. I don't have to focus that I'm deaf, oh, and I'm disabled. No, I know that I'm not. I can accomplish anything. If I work hard enough, I can accomplish anything. And all deaf can do that. You can accomplish anything you put your mind to. And the scouting program can help you in your life to do that. It will change who you are. You will become a better person through the scouting program as well. Back to you. Better. I like it. I like it. <laughs>